Today I'm here with my April wrap up for 2018. I actually read a total of 10 books which I am so surprised at because exams were crazy this semester. Without further ado, let us get started. <sighs> the first book that I read was Holding Up the Universe by Jennifer Niven and I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. It follows Libby Stroud who is trapped inside of her house due to her weight gain after her mother died. Now after losing a little bit of weight, she's deciding to return back to high school in order to start a new chapter in her life. It also follows Jack Maslin who is hiding a very big secret. He has a rare condition called prosopagnosia which is the inability to recognize faces so even the ones that he loves with the turn of his head he doesn't recognize them at all. So when Jack and Libby's paths cross, they realize that, that they're not quite so different from each other and a relationship forms. I have a lot of mixed feelings about this book because I found it very fluffy and enjoyable to read, but I can definitely see why it would be deemed problematic to some people. I understand the message the book was trying to send about how it doesn't matter what you look like, you're still wanted by somebody, but just some of the things that were said I can definitely see where it's a bit iffy. The major downfall I found in this book was the trope of the love fixes everything. I just don't personally like it so it kind of brought it down for me but it was enjoyable for the time that I read it and it's fluffy and cute so four out of five. The next book that I have is called The Cauldron's Bubble and it is by Amber Elby and I ended up giving this a one out of five stars. I really did not like it. I thought it was really boring. But it follows Alda who after the death of her grandmother finds this little stone in the lining of her cloak. She finds out that this little stone is actually something called a cauldron's bubble which has the ability to transfer her through time. On her travels she meets a boy named Drang but they end up getting separated and then she receives a quest from the three witches of Macbeth which sends her onto this journey where where she meets Drang again. And I just personally just, nope, I did not like it. Nothing happened. It's a very short book, but I was just bored throughout the whole thing. So definitely not my cup of tea. The next book that I read was called All of This is True and this is by Ligia de Penafor and I loved this book. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I'm going to have a full review up on my channel when it comes out on May 31st, so check back to hear my full thoughts, but I highly recommend it once it comes out. It was so, so good. The next book that I read was The Savage Song by Victoria Schwab and I ended up giving this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I absolutely loved it. It follows, the world is overrun by monsters which are created through violent acts that humans commit. Kate Harker is drawn back to the city from pieces of her past and August Flynn is a monster who wishes he was human and it basically follows their two journeys and how their paths intersect. But I do not know why I waited so long to read this book. It was so dang good. I loved both Kate and August as main characters. I think that they were so well developed. Kate was such a badass and August was just so self-aware. I just I love them. I love them so much. I also really liked how it wasn't romance based. There was very little romance at all, which I definitely appreciated. I feel like it's definitely going to turn into a romance in the second book, but honestly I'm here for it because the two characters are adorable and I love them, so I'm not mad about it. I really love the idea of the monsters and how they came about and how violence breeds more violence. I just thought it was a really well done book, very put together. The only reason I'm giving it a 4.5 instead of a 5 is because I felt that it was very slow to begin with and it took a lot of time to develop, which I understand is needed with this book to explain the monsters and everything that pertains to them, but I just wish that it picked up sooner, but once it did pick up I was... I was here for it. The next book I have is Ace of Shades by Amanda Foodie and I actually have a full review of this up on my channel already so check that out if you want to hear my full thoughts. But I ended up giving it a 4.5 out of 5. Highly recommend it. So good. Go pick it up if you haven't read it already. The next book I have is The Beginning of Everything by Robin Schneider and I ended up giving this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. It follows a boy named Ezra whose entire life changed after he attended a party where his girlfriend cheated on him. Now a year later... He's not the tennis star he used to be. He's no longer sitting with the popular crowd and he's not admired by his peers as he once was. And that's when the new girl Cassidy Thorpe ends up 
attending his school and his whole life changes once again. I just felt that this book was way too similar to Stargirl by Jerry Spinelli and I did like that one a lot more so I was kind of comparing the two. I didn't really like any of the characters in this book. I thought they were all very one-dimensional and annoying and I just could not connect to any of them. The only character I liked a little bit was Toby and we barely saw him throughout the book so if he was in it more I would have enjoyed it a lot more. I also really hated all the sex comments in the book and how literally every female character was portrayed as some dumb blonde bimbo except for Cassidy who was like this amazing girl that everybody needed to fall for and it was just like no no. I also felt that the ending was very rushed and very predictable so I just it wasn't for me. The next book I have I cannot even begin to explain how much I despise this book but it is Hexed by Michelle Chris and I give it a one out of five stars. I could rant about this book for a very long time so if you want to hear a rant review let me know but uh yeah would not recommend it was terrible. The next book I'm kind of bummed about because I really wanted to like it. The concept sounded amazing to me but it just was not my thing but it is The Trial by R.A. Crawford. A hundred years ago a intergalactic military group called Pulse was created in order to rid the entire world of men. So in order to join this military group, you have to complete a three-day trial that not many people have ever completed. So Stella and her best friend Faye have to work together in order to become the newest members of Pulse. As I said, the concept super cool. The execution of it, not so super cool. I was expecting a book full of badass females that were like empowering and work together but like it was literally just girl on girl hate the entire time and I just I could not connect to any of the characters. I hated all of them. I just was not into it at all. I did really like the monsters that the girls had to face during the trial. I thought that was a lot of fun but if you have a weak stomach, like, this book was just gore and blood everywhere, so definitely not what you should read if you can't handle blood and gore because it was literally on every single page. The next book I have is Vanishing Girls by Lauren Oliver, and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I actually have a love-hate relationship with Lauren Oliver. I really like Delirium, but I really didn't like Panic. This one was, like, in between those. It follows Nicole and Dara, who used to be inseparable until they were in an accident that caused Dara to become very severely injured. So now the girls barely talk to each other and then on Dara's birthday she ends up disappearing so Nicole has to figure out how she's going to bring her sister home because she believes that she's actually playing one of her games. Then connections between Dara's disappearance and a local girl named Madeline Snow going missing become relevant and Nicole needs to figure out what she can do to bring both of them home. The whole concept of the book was really intriguing. It's very, very similar to Identical by Ellen Hopkins, so I was comparing the two a lot, but I personally like Identical a lot more. It's one of my favorite books, so that's why my rating was pretty low. I also rated it lower because I think that it took a very long time for anything to actually happen in the story. If you're a big thriller reader, it's very predictable and obvious what the huge twist is going to be, but I feel like if you don't read a lot of thrillers, it would be a big surprise to you. I just personally read thrillers back to back to back, so I've seen this storyline before, but I did really like the mixed media of the book. It's told with like pictures and text messages and I just think that that's a lot of fun in books, but overall I thought it was fun to read so I would recommend it. I don't know if you guys are into it, but I liked it. And then the final book is Murder in Little Shendon and it's by A.H. Richards and I really did not like this book. I give it a one out of five stars. I just thought it was really boring. It's about a man named Finch who is brutally murdered and everybody in his town hated him so everybody is a suspect and it basically follows these three detectives trying to figure out who committed the murder and what their alibis are and I just... I did not like it. It was boring. I was just wanting it to be finished. So, I mean, I finished it, but I would definitely not recommend it to anybody. All right, guys. So that was my April wrap-up for 2018. Let me know down below what you guys read this month, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!